welcome your presence in this place as we recognize that there is only one life that life is God that life is perfect that life is my life right now that life is the life of each and every individual gathered here and beyond for truly there is not a spot where God is not and so it is from this place in consciousness that I speak a word I speak a word blessing today's service knowing that it unfolds in a divine, perfect way, and knowing that the perfect, unique, tailored message is delivered to each individual present here. I give thanks for Reverend Celeste's willingness to say, yes, Spirit, I'll be your voice. As she surrenders and let Spirit fill her with the divine message of love, of truth, of beauty. I give thanks for the Board of Trustees who conduct and handle the business affairs of the church, guiding and bringing East Bay Church into a place of perfect peace. I give thanks for the practitioners, the praying arms of the church, 
who hold and know the truth, regardless of whatever their appearance may be, that God is all that there is. I give thanks for each and every one of you that have shown up today, knowing that this service would not be complete without your unique energy field. I give thanks for this and so much more as we allow ourselves to sit back and commune with the divine. And so I invite you to seal this word with me for all eternity with the simple and so it is. Mighty Spirit Mighty Spirit Take over this place Take over this place Mighty Spirit Mighty Spirit Good morning, my name is Al Gibson and I'm your pulpit assistant this morning. I invite you to say our deck good morning. I invite you to recite our declaration of principles with me if you can stand. Those are found in the seat in front of you below. And as we say in unison, we believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existent cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by its creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. We believe in the individualization of the Spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one Spirit. We believe in the internality, the and that this goal is sure to be obtained by all. We believe in the unity of all life and that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feel this indwelling presence. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature and that anyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with God. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal God, and that we are surrounded by this creative mind, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. 
We believe in the healing of the sick through the power of this mind. We believe in the control of conditions through the power of this mind. We believe in eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givenness of life to all. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life we live is the life of God. So it is. So it is. Good morning, good morning. Thank you for being with that. I just want to highlight in the what we believe is that the manifest universe is the body of God. And so it's more than what we see, but it is all that we are. So welcome, welcome, welcome to East Bay. I'm Reverend Celeste Frazier. I'm the spiritual leader here. It is my joy to see you here this morning and to bring this loving field of awareness to surround each and every one of you. I want to acknowledge that we are an open, affirming, and welcoming center. And that means we don't care where you came from, what you do behind closed doors, or if you identify with a gender or not, all are welcome here and we're just here to see God as you. If this is your first time attending East Bay Church of Religious Science, would you be so kind as to stand so that we may confer a blessing upon you? All right, all right. May I have a practitioner to greet them? Please remain standing. May I have a practitioner to greet them? Thank you so very much. The congregation raises our hands in your direction and we say, welcome to the East Bay Church of Religious Science. We know who you are. We know who you are. You are the individualized expression of God. You are the individualized expression of God. You are the way that God reveals itself to us. You are the way that God reveals itself to us. Oh, we see that you have the love, the intelligence, and the beauty of God. We see that you have the love, the intelligence, and the beauty of God. May the roles that you have received or are receiving remind you of your own duty. May the roles that you have received or are receiving remind you of your own duty. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. Welcome to the East Bay Church of Religious Science. Welcome to the East Bay Church of Religious Science. Please take your seats with honor. And as four of us are coming in, I'm going to invite you all to look at someone and give them a smile. And then let that reach go beyond your eyes. Shake a hand. Give a hug if it's comfortable for you. Just spread the love. Thank you.
Good morning. Yes, we can make this place a better world. And as we begin to find our way back to our seats, I'm going to call practitioner Lynn Daniels up for this morning's community opportunity. Good morning, East Bay. Good morning. I'm going to just wait a minute for everyone to get settled. So first time visitors, thank you so much for joining us today. And please come to the bookstore after service to get a free CD of today's service. Please exchange your completed information card that's in the packet that you have uh, so that we can stay in touch with you. It's another way for us to say welcome to East Bay and thank you for your presence here. Practitioner prayer support. We believe prayer changes your life and my life, all of our lives. We have licensed practitioners who are available for prayer after service in the prayer room, which is in the front of the church. And you can recognize the practitioners by their purple stoles. So just grab one of us or come to the prayer room and we'd be more than happy to do prayer for you. We have midday meditation here at East Bay and it's a way for you to balance your mind, body and soul our midday meditation is from 12.30 to 1 p.m. Tuesday through Friday in the sanctuary. We also have a wonderful Wednesday night service. We welcome you to the Wednesday healing and revealing service to embrace your wholeness and re release the rest. Meditation is at 6.15 p.m. and service is at 6.30 p.m. We have three immediate community seva or service uh, opportunities. First, we have weekly office needs on Wednesday and Thursday to assist with office organization, folding programs, and the occasional mailings. If you have an hour or two on Wednesday or Thursday, please see Michelle for that opportunity. Oh, see Michelle. I'm sorry, I, yeah, no, I know I was just saying for so people could recognize her. Um, we have a need for handy person who can do electrical, plumbing, painting, carpentry, and general fix it type of task. We appreciate skilled workers with proven capabilities and great work ethics. This is an ongoing request on a weekly or semi monthly basis. So anyone who's skilled please uh, let them know in the office and we greatly appreciate you. We also are seeking people to assist in the education ministry with the setup of classes, distribution of handouts for workshops and more. If you have any interest in doing so, there may be a discount in it for you. Please call the church office between Tuesday and Thursday for questions or for interest in this opportunity. We also have an opportunity for you to join our 2019 Season for Nonviolence team. The Season for Nonviolence is rapidly approaching, and Reverend Badia Cooper, will, who used to lead up the season for years, is now back leading up the service, leading up the, the season for us. We will do a revival of the season here at East Bay starting in just three short weeks. We are planning a candlelight peace vigil around Lake Merritt, as we, as we have done in the past, as well as a panel discussion on nonviolent communication at the end of the season. We will also give out local Shiro and Hero awards to those who have been working in the community to bring peace to our region, and we may have a peace comfort, a concert in the mix as well. It sounds pretty exciting. Various reading, curricula, and communication will be reflected during the season. East Bay has done great things for the season in a grand way with an intention to make a great impact of peace in the Bay Area. We need people who are willing to help with planning, volunteers to help with various preparation for the main event, and we need our nominations for the heroes and sheroes you think need recognition. 
First, we would like to recognize people in our East Bay community as well as, and then we'll go to people in the greater Bay Area. Nomination forms are available in the Fellowship Hall. If you are interested in serving on this team, see either Harriet Johnson or Dana after service in the Fellowship Hall. We are undergoing a membership drive. Our 2019 membership drive is now underway. If you would like to be a member of East Bay, please attend the new membership classes in the community room of the Reverend E. Building on January 20th and February 3rd. The entrance to the Reverend E. Building is up a few short steps and faces the parking lot entrance to the sanctuary. Winter classes. This is the last week to register for the Essential Earnest Homes class. This course is based on the Declaration of Principles. Each week, students examine each of the ideas in it. This mystical class fulfills the, ph the philosophy requirement and takes you deeper. The class meets on Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and child care is available. East Bay's business directory is here. East Bay has a network of our community businesses as a resource for you. Visit our website for info on East Bay's trusted business owners and support them if possible. We have a need for a Sunday driver. A member is seeking a ride to church on Sunday who lives in or near Emeryville or passes by Bayside Park Assisted Living on the way to church. If you have the heart to assist this person in being here in body with us in service, please contact the office and let us know who you are and how to contact you to connect you with your blessing. And that concludes the announcements for today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. And now we will have our musical inspiration Sharon Henderson and Reflection. God is good all the time, yes? And all the time God is good. We are part of that oneness and that great, amazing thing that is God. And all of it lives and resides in us. They, he, she, it lives in us. Live 
loving you. Ingweyama, ingweyama bala, ingweyama, ingweyama bala, ingweyama, ingweyama bala, ingweyama, ingweyama bala. Was 
in order for us to be perfected, there has to be some willingness to want to expand, to want to grow, to want to just not stay put the way we were. Because although you may look in the mirror and concentrate on those flaws, if it's a physical flaw, you're likely to want to go and get some kind of cream or shave or something to improve what you see that appears to have some kind of a seeming imperfection. But we need to do that emotionally as well. But we need to do that spiritually as well. Because so much of what we are carrying around are thoughts about something that happened in the past. I talked about that yesterday in the Course of Miracles class that we did online and by a conference call. And, and what we came to know was that we do have an opportunity to realize in this moment that now is now. And that even though we think we are thinking a particular thing, we are usually just regurgitating an old thought from the past and not really having a new thought, live streamers. And so understand that anything that is going on in our minds needs to be examined. Because it's not necessarily true that we want to continue thinking about what happened in the past. Oh yes, we cling to those members of our family who have shuffled off the mortal coil because we yearn for their company from time to time or, or maybe even more often than that. But the thoughts that we had are not worthy of this moment if they are keeping us in the past. Now, in the way that it works in the science of mind, it also talks about that aspect of belief. And, and Ernest Holmes says, if you're laboring under the idea of limitation, then everything that you think about is a picture of limitation. Right? You may look at a beautiful picture of family and say, oh, that looks wonderful, and then something will say, well, you know, the last time you tried to have a real nice vacation, and what happened? And that has nothing to do with the present moment. Right? And so, Ernest Holmes says, where is he placing himself in mind? Is he not in substance saying, I cannot have and enjoy good things? Now be real, you know you had those kind of thoughts. Whenever you have stood in the way of going for something that would you think that would bring you joy, there's something that comes up and it says, hmm, I don't think I can. And you are the block. You are the shadow. You are the doubt. And in those moments where you were in the shadow, you are blocking the light of God by your own unbelief. So the invitation is to say, you know what? You can reshape the basis of this thought by starting to say, you know, I perceive that I am what I am because of this infinite thing that finds its abiding place in me. Right? That's the Lion King song. They live in me. Right? He lives in me. So if you are knowing that the presence of God is living and moving and having his beingness in you, then surely you know there is something good in you. But if you are focused on those old experiences and those past disappointments, then you can stumble and you may fall in a way and in a manner that you probably won't find to be comfortable. You know, we have some wonderful um, leaders and some wonderful historical figures that have given us some insight. Martin Luther King is one of them. And when I first left Los Angeles to go to Chicago, um, 
a dear friend who I worked with uh, in outreach ministry gave me this book. It's called A Knock at Midnight, and it's inspiration from the great sermons of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And, and you know, I, there are many different kinds of spiritual books, but there are some that are just relevant in terms of what's going on in the world today. Like, like you can look at the, the prefaces, the prefaces by well-known, uh, of each chapter, the preface of each chapter is done by well-known preachers. Like, you can look at any year, and you'll see where it says, well, you know what? You know, the church has kind of not been present to what's going on, right? And so for those people who are in denial, for those people who will not speak to their churches or their synagogues or their centers about what is going on, Martin Luther King would encourage them to know that the church is a perfect place for you to be able to examine life as it is so that you can apply that spiritual principle to it and to be able to know that there is something greater than what I see on the outside that I can now be with, go back to the beginning. I can be with. I can absolutely remember that God lives in me, regardless of that thing that I did that I really shouldn't have did, done. God lives in me. So we have the opportunity to really look around in our lives and not be so mesmerized by the things that come up on the news or the things that come up online. There's, there's wonderful things and there's horrific things. And I, I for one, try to look at both of them and, and to enjoy that with which I have gratitude for. You know, a bus driver seeing a little toddler just going across the overpass in his little jumper, you know, Nobody's with her. She stops the bus, get off the bus, and then goes and picks up the baby and brings him back to the bus and calls the authority. So, so don't we have an opportunity to be our brothers and sisters here? Don't we have an opportunity to say, you know what? That doesn't look safe for that person. What can I do in order to be of service in this moment as someone else came from the, the bus who was probably delayed by the bus stopping and getting this little boy and gave a coat that she was wearing to cover the little child. And so we have opportunities in our day-to-day -day experiences to remember the stuff that lives and moves and has its beingness in us. Because we, we spend way too much time focusing on that thing that's called evil. And Ernest Holmes says, you know, we must instill into the mind the fundamental proposition that good is without bounds. Say to your neighbor, good is without bounds. <laughs> and then he quotes Psalm 23, only good and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, now, this is true. You can go in and start having, you know, all kind of, you know, bits about spiritual bypass if you want to. But, but the thing about it is, is that it's true. Good knows no bounds. I'm knowing in every situation where there's a challenge. When somebody is getting out of pocket, you know, and they need to, you know, probably be told to sit down for a little while so that they can think about things. You know, in the meantime, someone can emerge who can absolutely be, you know, just waiting for an opportunity to do good. You know, there's something that each of us go through in our various disappointments you know, King talks about, you know, being frustrated and, and, and the clouds of anxiety floating in your mental skies. And, and, and he talks about all the, the things that are happening with people. That some people are hungry this morning. You know? That some people are still living with, you know, some racist thoughts. And some people are still living with some homophobic thoughts. And he didn't say that part. I was, I was talking about the racist part. But he was talking about the racist part. But 
is something that is happening that people are having real challenges with. You know, I had, you know, uh, one of my colleagues in Detroit, she said, you know, the woman was doing her hair, and, you know, the woman was saying, you know, she, she really didn't feel well, but she couldn't afford to not work. You know, how many people are living that life, right? But, and then she really didn't sometimes have food that she, that she had to have cereal sometimes, right? So, so people have challenges, but that doesn't mean that good has balance, okay? That doesn't mean that God is not still active, because of course, by just saying so, you know, my friend, you know, gave her some money. You know, and, and if we don't let each other know that we have a need, then, then we get hungry and we don't get fed. You know, Ernest Holmes says that the thing can work for us only through us. So let us begin to accept today more good than we experienced yesterday. Are you ready for more good than you experienced yesterday? He said, and to know that we shall reap a harvest of fulfilled desires. Now, the only thing that can get in the way of us and our fulfilled desires is doubt. Right? Because you have the power of the infinite mind of God. And when you are accessing that mind of God, then there is no thing that is not possible for you. Yes. You know? If, if, if you are someone like Dr. King who said, I'm willing to die in order for the people to know something more than segregation, to know something more than separation, then, then you are committed to something, and I'm not inviting anybody to be a sacrificial lamb or a martyr, but I am saying, if it's important enough to you, what won't you do in order to have it? What won't you do in order to experience life in a greater way? Will you be stymied? Will you be stuck? Will you be paralyzed by the headlines of today? Or will you be working toward a better tomorrow? Okay? That's the invitation. The invitation is not to go into despair and say, well, you know, nothing changed. Everything is always the same. It's the way it always has been. That is counterproductive. That is fear leading you. That is fear that has control over your mind. You want fear to have control over your mind. Do you want fear to have control over your mind? Is it really something you have to think about? Seriously? Right? So fear is controlling your mind every time you doubt that your dreams can come true. Fear is controlling your mind every time you have a pause when you think about going for what will bring you joy. You know? Yes, there are definitely disappointments that are happening in life. Anybody knows that. A two-year-old knows that. You know, a three-month-old knows that. There's disappointments. But that doesn't, that doesn't stop your mind. All of us are, are seeking something greater. And the way that Ernest Holmes said the thing can work for us is to know and accept and to leave that apparent evil behind. And I put evil in quotation marks, you know, science of mind, religious science is not really keen on talking about evil. You know, we don't like to hang out there because we're knowing that thoughts are things. Do you know that thoughts are things? Yes. Do you know that your mind is very powerful and that what you think about, you bring about? Yes. And so when you know that, when you get these kind of thoughts that are limiting or when you get these kind
kind of thoughts that make you feel afraid or when you get these kind of thoughts that make you feel limited, that you can only go so far, you can only travel so high in consciousness and well, you know, I just, you know, I just don't believe that and I'm just going to stay stuck here and that's all. But understand that it is done unto you as you believe and if you are stuck there, then that's the extent of your life. Period. There's no, it, the law is perfect and it's working. It's absolute in what it does. It follows the thought. It follows the idea. It follows the power. And the power is in the thought. It's going to follow that until there's a different thought. Right? Yeah. That's the way it works. Yeah. And so, you know, every now and then, we have to do some things that are not comfortable. You know? Dr. King had to go to jail that wasn't comfortable. He had to cross over that bridge in Selma. That wasn't comfortable. So when you think about it, what are you willing to do that will improve the quality of your life and the generations to come? You know, that's why we have things like the season for nonviolence. I'll be celebrating it. I believe this will be the 21st time that I'm going to be participating in the season for nonviolence. And, and, and whatever it is that we are doing, it makes a difference. Whatever it is. You know, I, I, I was talking to Bishop Flunder this morning, early this morning, it was probably around 6.30 or something, you know, we have to catch each other when we can because she's all over the world and she's on the international clock, so you don't really have to worry about waking up certain people. <laughs> but, 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 but so we want to talk about, and not only talk about, but be about what it means to really deal with this homelessness thing that's here in the back. And, and the kinds of things that we can work on together. Because it's uncomfortable for me to drive past certain streets in Oakland. It's uncomfortable for you to drive past certain streets in Oakland. And yes, we're doing things. Oh, is doing a fabulous job of, of taking people out. And, and, and uh, she's taking the blankets that you're giving her and, and, and whatever hot food that we're taking out there or whatever, you know, we're doing and, and we can do more because people are suffering and that doesn't mean that, you know, that has to continue, that we just accept that and that that's sufficient, right? That means that there's something that I'm willing to do to know more freedom. And even if that means that my mind is even freed up more now so that I'm not contemplating what a horrific thing this is for people to live this way. And she finally agreed with me when people are, well, she's not saying that she was slow to agree with me. I just haven't heard y'all agree with me. But somebody <laughs> finally agreed with me that people will do desperate things. Amen when they are in desperate situations. And so we are never singly alone in our challenges. There is always an opportunity for us to do something. So, what Dr. King was saying is the church is called to set free those who are captive. Mm. I'll say it again, because apparently that just stunned you in some way. <laughs> the church is called to set free those that are captive. Right? We, we can do so much within our walls, but we have more to do that is outside of our safe village that we have here. Right? Because if we go back to the beginning, then we realize, wow, I have all of this good in me. What am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with this goodness that lives in me? What am I going to do with this love that I say that I am? You want to set someone free? 
You know, you might not be able to convince someone not to be homophobic. You might not be able to convince someone not to be racist. You might not be able to convince someone not to be, um, um, I lost the word, but the word that means like fascist work. That's <laughs> the word. That's just, just so concerned about your own little country that you think that it's better than in anyone else's country. That you think that, that, that no one else has more value than, than, than where you live, you know? I, I, I sometimes follow Shonda Rhimes and she was, you know, she was pretty happy about the fact that, you know, Grey's Anatomy was like the longest running medical show ever. And then the people in England were like, uh, maybe you're talking about the United States, but we got this other show that's been running for 33 years, so no. <laughs> so we've got to understand that our lives are not the totality of life itself, that because we live in this planet that is becoming smaller and smaller through social media, smaller and smaller through global industry, global economies, and how we have definite effects on one another, then we've got to look beyond our immediate circumstances and say, you know what? There is a kingdom that is greater than the one that I've been living in. There's a kingdom that is outside of the walls of what's familiar to me. You know, there's a, there's a greater way of knowing that God is absolutely willing to take us where we want to go beyond our regular sets of circumstances, conditions, and situations. Because Ernest Holmes tells us, the time must come when we shall have left the apparent evil behind, when it shall be rolled up like a scroll and numbered with the things which were once thought to be. Can you at least use the greatest power that you have, which is your imagination, because you have access to the mind of God through your imagination, to see a world that really does work for everyone? You know, and if you allow yourself to see that, then the steps that you take and the choices that you make will be toward working toward that greater life. And so that's a life that, that is without any borders. That's a life that's without any judgment about anybody who lives across another border. That's a life that lives without just looking down on people who don't have what you do. That's a life that's looking beyond people that don't have the faith that you do. That's beyond looking at people at, at whom, with whom, may be sleeping with some people that you don't think they should be sleeping with. Not your business. You know, so, so just understand that there's a, a broader mind that you have access to. And because we have a, access to this broader mind, there are possibilities beyond the one that we have been looking at and becoming accustomed to and getting so comfortable with that we're even getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that means it's time for us to get to work. Ernest Holmes says, let us realize and work with this sound knowledge and perfect faith that as high as we shall make our mark in mind and spirit, so high shall be its outward manifestation in our material world. See, there was a time when there were geniuses who were building pyramids and they had less than we do to work with. What have you done for life lately? If I were to paraphrase Janet Jackson's song, <laughs> what have you done for life lately? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's not to put you on the spot, but but yeah. Oh, what have I done for life lately? Right? 
And, and, and that's not to make you feel small. That's, a, that's to say, it's time. It's time to know that the way God works is through me. It's time to work to know that the world becomes greater because I can imagine it and I can take steps toward making it better. And that's to say that, you know what? There's a science of mind that says, my spiritual self is my gift to life. So what is your spiritual self informing you of? Don't suppress it and call it impossible. Don't ignore it and say that's, a, that's not going to happen. You know, the affirmation that we're invited into is, I get on with needed healings. And I let go of self-destructive behaviors that impede my healthy living. So if it seems too grand to go outside of your house, at least start with your own. At least use the spiritual self to inform you that you can go ahead and deal with the healing that is needed. You can go ahead and let God reveal itself. You know? You can see that challenging person having given you another prayer request. Yes? You can see those people who aren't cooperating as being another way to understand the unconditional nature of God. To understand the unconditional nature of God means that, wow, that's what that's like. Right? That doesn't mean you condone people's behavior that's out of pocket. But that means, wow, do I really get an opportunity to love this person despite how they're showing up right now? Do I really get an opportunity to love unconditionally? So in this affirmation that says, I let go of self-destructive behaviors that impede my healthy living, you don't have to search long to find those unhealthy things that you're doing that are impeding your healthy living. You already know what they are. I invite you to go back to the prayer room today and ask for support if you're not able to do it by yourself. I invite you to pull a practitioner who may be wearing a stole and say, you know, I need prayer because I'm ready to do that healing work now. I'm ready to really have a life that is healthy, right? Whatever agreements you made with yourself, I won't call them resolutions. Whatever intentions you set was an agreement that you made with yourself, so I'm inviting you to keep your promise to yourself. I'm inviting you to keep your promise for a greater life, <coughs> that life that God called good in the beginning, and knowing that it's possible because it lives in you. I invite you to know that the way it works is by your yes, the way it works is by your willingness. The way it works is to remember the wholeness, the perfection, and the completeness of your being that lives and moves and has its life in each one of us. And when we pull that together, the greatest of us pulled together makes the greatest possibilities possible. I invite you to embrace a greater life, a greater love. Namaste. Amen. I believe the treatment box is headed up. Practitioner Kawaz is bringing it, and so as he does so, I invite the ministers and practitioners who are here in service to join me in prayer as we focus on the goodness of God. Mother is dwelling within me, Father is dwelling within me, all is dwelling within me. I know wholeness lives and moves and has in its beingness in me. And as I know this for myself, I know it for everyone in this space, everyone who is under the sound of my voice, the live streamers, anyone listening to the recording. I'm knowing that there is a timeless spaceless God that has no boundaries, no borders, no walls. No limitations whatsoever. That 
is the presence that I speak from, and that is the presence that I speak to now as I consider those who have reached out to us this week. Annette Lane, longtime usher, has been moving through, has been moving through a challenge over the past few weeks. And so what we know about Annette is that her yes to being of service is also coming from a space and a place that is whole. So we, work, we focus on that whole aspect of Annette right here, right now. And whatever appears to be in conflict with that truth, with that knowing, with that good that is hers, we call it for to absolutely wipe out any dis-ease in her mind, in her emotional body, in her physical body, in all of her subtle bodies. There is a cleansing happening now for Annette. And just as she was willing to usher us into the sanctuary, we are willing to know that she is ushering in her good, her perfect health, her greater life, and that she can leave behind that experience and take whatever lesson that that was and reveal itself to her and through her and be about her business so that we can be hugging her again in service. We surround a Sasha Workland as she prepares for her mother's memorial service, Gail Workland, on January 25th. That's a week from Friday as we come together in community and give thanks for this divine energy that is Gail Workland as she served us as our practitioner in the years that were past. And even in the midst of all of her health challenges, she remained knowing the truth. We know this now for her family and friends as they prepare for this particular service. I'm knowing that all the part that was always free is still free for Onion as he thinks about the trauma that his mother experienced by being assaulted. And we know that the person that assaulted her, who was subsequently killed, is now moving into his next lesson, and that there is no one to blame for his death, but there is something that each person gets to know is greater than this set of circumstances. And I know peace for Onion as he thinks about any danger that is imminent and as he thinks about the safety and well-being of his family. I'm knowing peace for Shay, who's 14 weeks pregnant now, and the highest and best pregnancy and the greatest life possible for her baby who is yet to be born. I'm knowing that for any of our young adults who are challenged with what friendships to keep and what friendships that are no longer serving them, that they choose the highest role possible for their life's unfoldment, for their greatest expressions of who they are becoming, and give thanks for whatever parts people have played in their lives so that as they move forward, they're knowing that they were able to learn from that person and now there's time to move forward and learn from other people. I put my arms around those who are struggling with prosperity for any sense of limitation, any sense that the choices in life are limited in any way. That there is an ample abundance of God to go around. And that each of us are heirs to the kingdom. And if we accept it, and we do, then it is ours. And I am knowing that there is no spirit speak behind any of this, but this is truly the truth that is made real through us by allowing it to work through us. And that there are not any obstacles that are greater than God. So we get to tell our problems about our big God. And we leave that phraseology of big problems behind so that we can be present to present the face of infinite possibilities to ourselves. I'm knowing that for anything that seems to be a challenge for anyone who has placed something in the prayer box that God is able to that it is the very act of writing that request that has activated.
activated the mind of God to fulfill itself perfectly and completely. And we do not let doubt get in the way of this truth. We absolutely express and enjoy all that we have said that we want to come forth that is for the highest and greatest good of all concerned. We do so with gratitude, for gratitude is an activating force. We do so with a blessed assurance and insurance that God is good. And therefore, knowing that God is good, we know that we are good. And therefore, we know that all is well. In gratitude for it all, I release this word, I let it be. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Well, it's time for us to move into our offertories. We are given a challenge to stretch beyond doubt, to let it work through us as we prepare ourselves to give from what we have already received and be poised to receive more by our willingness to give. This is what the divine flow looks like. This is how God works through us. As the ushers come forward and the music begins, we give freely, just as we have freely received. Gratitude for it all. I lovingly release this word and I let it be. And 
so it is. Amen. So what has not been talked about is that there was no youth church today. But we got to appreciate having the young people with us in service. It's an invitation for those of you who are thinking about participating in serving the youth to go ahead and get the live scan done, the background checks, we pay for them. There's nothing coming out of your pocket in order for that to happen. And as one of our key members of the Youth and Family Ministry is taking a sabbatical for the first time in 16 years. Yeah. And you'll see Fabiana in services because she's been in this teaching long enough to know that she wants to get fed and that you got to have something to feed from in order to be able to have something to give. I also want to invite you as we prepare for our week ahead to think about Dr. Francione's Embracing World Religions class. Not only is she a brilliant woman, but she has a passion for teaching. And she is innovative and she is very interested in the welfare of you, her students. And I know it will be a blessing to you and you can sign up at the kiosk today. I'm also letting you know that I will be taking next Sunday off and I am not leaving you bereft. There is a beautiful friend of mine. You may have remembered her from my installation. Her name is Candace G. She's coming up from Agape to give you the word next Sunday. And she's also coming to give you a prosperity workshop, prosperity from the inside out. As long as I've known her, she's been an accountant and her clients are wealthy. So she understands financial principle and spiritual principle. You don't want to choose next Sunday to stay home. You want to be here. You want to get what you call for. And so now, let's call for our departure as we prepare for our benediction. Are you going to have youth for coming? Okay. Good afternoon, church. Yeah. All right, it's good to be back in my home. All right, I'm Brother Tucson, and um, I have the pleasure of working with these amazing youth today. We have Hannah, Korea, Isa, who's just started coming to the church uh, with her sister, Eva. We have Cyrus here, and her sis his sister. Uh, I totally forgot your name. Nalina? Nalini? Nalini, yes. And we have... Tyree. Awesome. <laughs> and we have practitioner Deborah, who is supporting the, the, the youth youth here. Deborah. And I was working with the teens, or the young tweens. And uh, what we worked on with them today was... Uh, the concept God is all, and in that allness, we can uh, use the power of visualization to activate the law of attraction, right? They can use that power as they're coming up, growing up, and uh, can you guys talk about what you talked about as far as your, what you want to attract in your life?
God being in everything and in everybody and drawing pictures to depict that. I drew everything. I drew people, earth, planets, fish, and trees. Gratitude for it all. I release this word 